Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. And I'm Malika Bilal. Today's Swedish hip hop artist Rebstar is here to perform. He'll also discuss how growing up in one of Sweden's most notorious neighborhoods fuels his work. Share your thoughts. You can tweet us at AJ Stream or leave a comment in our live YouTube chat, and you too will be in the stream. Hello, my name is Ina Moja. I'm a musician and climate activist, and you are in the stream. Swedish hip-hop artist Rebstar is more than just one of Sweden's leading musical exports. He is a music mogul who's worked with global heavy hitters such as Drake, Trey Songs and The Weeknd. And on top of all that, he wants to be known as a human rights advocate, mentor and entrepreneur. So we're pleased to welcome Rebstar, also known as Reb and Shah, to the stream. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having me. I want to dip right into headlines about the neighborhood you grew up in, because this is how they're often portrayed. I'll share a few. This from uh, 2019, this is November. Several people were in the sheltered villa in Rosengard. Another person, this from 2018, this is a tweet of an independent article, visited some of the worst areas, including Malmo's Rosengard, where children as young as 14 roam the streets with Kalashnikovs. And one other, this from the local Sweden, man injured in a shooting there, was likely shot in the leg, police have said. So this is how it's portrayed. This is how another resident of Malmo, the, the city where uh, that neighborhood is located in, Lee Sinner, someone who you've worked with, a musician right. himself, says, bad things happen all around the world. It's no different here. But blaming it all on one neighborhood, that's where the media gets it wrong. So tell us about the place you grew up in and what it feels like to see <laughs> well, it represented like that. That is not an accurate description of Justin Gord at all. And the problem is when everyone focuses on one perspective, you're going to rewrite the correct narrative. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happened here. Uh, obviously, you know, they want headlines. Makes sense. But I think Sinner really pointed it out. You can't scapegoat Justin Gord. Mm -hmm. It's not the root of all evil. That's not, it doesn't cause all, all the issues in Malmo. Uh, there are a lot of issues, but there's definitely problems that need to be handled. But mm -hmm. I think more so in Malmo rather than Joseph Wood. We just take the, the rep for it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I have to salute your parents because as an only child, they documented your every moment <laughs> of childhood. Let's start here on my laptop. Um, what do you have? A face that... Oh, I don't know. You could only love. I don't know how you got that photo. <laughs> That's uh, look like a mini any, Buddha. Any musical genius there starting off? Well, how old were you when you realized that music was, was important? You know what's funny? I always knew music was important, but it wasn't anything I ever considered doing. Mm -hmm. I would always watch MTV. Yeah. Always. That's my only memory as a kid, watching MTV, dancing to music, that they would, I would try to mimic what I, I tried to do the moonwalk, never managed to pull it off. Uh, I would sing and then my mom made me take piano lessons when I was maybe 10 mm -hmm. to 14. I hated it. No one likes doing what they're told. Mm -hmm. So it became more of a chore than anything else. But it was obviously, you know, a lot of fun growing up with musical inspirations. Uh, but it was never a career move for me until uh, much, much later. So pushing along into that much later, I want to share a video comment we got from a freelance journalist who talks about when she first became aware of your music. Have a listen. So 10 years ago, Rebstar made this track with Trey Songs called Without You. And uh, living in a small region in the south of Sweden, I was both impressed and curious. Who is this artist? There were definitely other interesting artists doing interesting things. But there was something about Rebstar that caught my attention. I think it was a combination of his business mind, him raising the bar for what you could do, and also just the fact that he didn't seem constrained within the limits of a small local scene. He definitely seemed like someone to keep track of. She mentions your business mind there. You didn't start out as a musician. You started out as an entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, I think it was just some... So here's the thing. My parents had so many different jobs while I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And I think that diverse range of, well, this is what you got to do. This is what you got. You move on to the next thing, whatever you got to do, not just to survive, but also to prosper. Um, and there's so much creativity in business, at least for me. I, I love the idea of there's it's like a little seed that's been planted, a thought, and then you can see that come to fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, but yeah, music, like I said, I never anticipated becoming an artist. It just, I think I was, you know when you see in those old cartoons when there's going to be a standoff and they walk like that and then you got to, that's kind of how I saw music where I was faced with, are you going to do this? Because you have a shot and I love making music, but it never really dawned on me that, hey, this could actually be a profession. One of the things that you do as an, your entrepreneurial mind is that you reach out to people yeah. and you say, hey, I'd like to work with you, or hey, let's get together. And there is a video that goes with the track that you're about to perform for us called Somebody Named Frank. And the way that the animation happened is particularly the way that you operate. Can you explain <laughs> that before you actually go and perform yeah, it for us? Yeah, that's so funny because that's exactly what it was. It was, I found um, a graphic designer on Instagram who had never done a music video, and his, he focuses on space-oriented art. Mm -hmm. But I just have an eye and ear for talent, I think. And I had, my gut feeling never strays me wrong. I knew he never, it never, it can, it'll never steer me wrong, and I just knew that he'll be able to pull it off. So I got the chance to work with him, and crazy enough, he just moved to New York from India, mm -hmm. uh, and we met for the first time a little over a week ago after the video was done and everything. All right. Let's see his work. Let's see your work. Sure. Somebody named Frank with Repstar. Outburst of violence, particularly in Malmo. After their experience with the riots, firefighters will now often refuse to answer calls in Rosengard without a police escort. But if these arrivals aren't able to work, they're at least able to commit crimes. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. Second chief in command, best job there is, is the middle man. Yeah, Frank the youngest son, play no instruments, but he got some drums. Turn it to a two or one, if you take a shot, he gon' make the jump. Yeah, Frank is an optimist, even though he seen grimy-ish. Low key on the internet, numbers all memorized in his head. Yeah. FaceTime never text, only FaceTime, I ain't talking tech. Hit me when I made Forbes 30 list, told him he will make Forbes dirty list, yeah. Frank knows somebody named Lips, he don't ever snitch though, don't you get it twisted? Frank run a tight ship, vintage like familiar, kinda like a business. I learned a lot from Frank, why we talking money if we ain't talking interest? Cats from out of town, wanna have a good time, candy and some chicken. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. Second chief in command, best job there is, is the middle man, yeah. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. Second chief in command, best job there is, is the middle man, yeah. Frank hustles in his sleep, he get money while you count his sheep. Entrepreneur, opening doors, not a Christian, but he got a lot of Dior, yeah. Montclair, D squared, lawyer done paying for his mistakes. President of construction, brick by brick, made a lot from nothing, yeah. Came up from the underground, Robin Hood of the hood, always hold it down, yeah. Donnie Polka, alhamdulillah, got in his corner, he never let him down, yeah. Always stay away from trouble, living two lives like you got a double. Someone on an island, you gotta love it. With time in playing in a Louis Duffel, yeah. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. Second chief in command, best job to is the middle man, yeah. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. Second chief in command, best job to is the middle man, yeah. No go zones. These are the areas where cops won't even enter because it's too dangerous for them. Firefighters have come under attack in the mostly Muslim neighborhood of Rosengard. I know somebody named Frank, homie from the way, he know how to make bank. It's created a society where Swedes don't feel at home anymore. You were listening to Swedish hip-hop artist Reb Star perform one of his newest songs, Somebody Named Frank. It's music like that that's getting him recognition in Sweden and beyond. So here's one person who gives us a glimpse into why. Alphonse Karabuda is president of the European Composer and Songwriter Alliance. Reb Shaw, or Reb Star, is part of the Swedish music wonder. 
What differs him from others is that he didn't aim for an existing spot. He created his own, and he opened it up for others. Success didn't happen for Eben. He created it. He's a man of opposites and of action. A record label not good enough? Well, he starts his own. Complaining of the music business not recognizing talent? Well, you do your own research and you find the talent. Make sure it's not lost. Add to this important community work and you have a hip hop gentleman. A hip hop wow. gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Some very kind words. Tell us about the music <laughs> label that you started. So Today is Vintage is the name of the label and I created it out of necessity. I think Sweden has so much talent, so much talent, but they're just, they lack the infrastructure. And back when I started making music, it was way more elitist. And there were so-called gatekeepers. And I didn't want to wait for someone to discover me. And I didn't want to see all these other amazing talents that I knew could be superstars one day be ignored. I love this picture here, because it shows you and <coughs> other Swedish artists uh, Everyone can have a look at it right there. Uh, who, who's surrounding you there? What's, uh, what's that talent? Uh, so to my left is yeah. Famosa Bayo. To my right is Leslie Tay, uh -huh. uh, multi-platinum um, producer, songwriter Ooh. in Sweden, and Yaki, another rapper behind me as well. What is Swedish hip-hop? How, how would I know Swedish hip-hop from any other kind of hip-hop? What, what's, what's the special secret sauce in it? It's very raw. Okay. There's a lot of emotion that goes behind it. Obviously, most of the rappers in Sweden rap in Swedish, so that's the number one tell. You can just tell by the language. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I find Swedish hip hop so interesting because we also, it's Malmo specifically such a melting pot that you pick, you, you're accustomed to so much different culture that you'll always have a little bit of, you know, the Middle East or Stockholm or Germany. There's a, it's a melting pot for sure. So people from all around the world um, are, are enjoying that melting pot and I think that they're picking up on it. We got this tweet from someone who just watched a performance live and then sent this in. Music is powerful and Rebstar has touched me with his music. I'm coming all the way from South Africa and he's bringing a narrative to, to the world that is hardly portrayed by this country. Educate us, thank you. So that's one person's perspective, but we got another person's who knows you. He worked with you. So this is Guy Joyner. He's a sound engineer from the UK, and he did the mixing and mastering on your recent album. And he talks to us about the song that you just played. He says, in Somebody Named Frank, I was impressed by the way the themes of prejudice and injustice were woven into an evolving narrative. And so I wanted to make sure that the vocals were as clear and upfront as possible to help get the story across. What do you hope people take away from that, that song and your album? You, you know, People are always so shocked when you tell them there's problems in Sweden as well. Mm. We're not exempt of oppression. And I'm not saying what we experience in Sweden is the worst kind of opp oppression. However, this is my story. I'm telling it from where I come from. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to understand that as well. There are issues that need to be resolved. Can we dig into that just a little bit sure. deeper? Because I feel that we're just on the surface at the sure. moment. And, and I just want to be more candid about... Of course. You write about your experiences. You write about what you see. Yeah. Share a bit more. Jusen God, so I went to uh, school there for one year. And I have, I'm so glad that I got the chance to transfer because I don't think I would be the person I am today if I would have continued going to school there. And don't get me wrong, there are so many smart people. Some, all, most of my closest friends are from Jusen God. And that's why I like this video that you guys uh, or uh, just saw where, for example, where I say, Frank hit me when I made Forbes 30 list. Told him he will make Forbes dirty list. It's just your intelligence and all your smarts have been applied to something else because you never had the academic foundation to take another route. And I think that's a big issue that needs to be tackled. Opportunity, lack of opportunity lack for of young people. Lack of opportunity, education specifically as well. Mm -hmm. um, the lack of resources lack of resources. I think that's a, a narrative. The one that you are bringing is a narrative that people are saying, um, we don't hear often enough from Sweden. Right. And so that some people are calling you part of a wave of, of this uh, Swedish uh, group of people who are coming to bring that narrative and to bring music that we haven't heard before. So I want to play a video comment from a journalist who says just that. Her name is Kathy. She's the author of a book 
God Save the Queens, The Essential History of Women in Hip Hop, and she interviewed Reb Star. Have a listen. I uh, had the pleasure of interviewing Reb Star for Mass Appeal a few years back, and in my article, I reference his entry point as the Swedish invasion. The reason why I did that was, you know, there's been this influx of Swedish talent that has traveled to America, but really there has never been a hip hop artist to successfully penetrate the American market. And the thing that Reb Star is doing is he's creating this whole new lane for European hip hop artists to enter the American music industry, hip hop, everything, which I really do credit as being a first. And the only way to really title it is to call it an invasion. So when people think of Swedish music, they might think of Robin, they might think of ABBA, but do they think hip hop? And are you trying to change that? Yeah, I. People always make a fuss about, you know, here's the thing you need to know about Swedish culture. Uh -huh. It's a little taboo to say, I want more, or I, to be overly ambitious. I am overly ambitious, mm -hmm. and I love it, and I think you should be proud of that. Uh, so there's always a little fuss about, does, does he want to be the first Swedish rapper to break overseas? I just hope I'm not the last Swedish rapper to do so. If I knock down a few doors, that's what matters to me. That's why I work with all these amazing talents in Sweden as well. I'm not picking the easiest task there is, but that's just something that's very important to me. No one gave me any support in Sweden when I was coming up. That's why uh, you saw the journalist Ida Skuman talk about uh, my first record with Trey Songs. I found support over here. So of course, afterwards, it creates this ripple effect, but. I think Sweden, it's become very different now, but I think that's what we need, a support system. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping to contribute to that somehow. You're based in New York now. Does that mean you've just escaped from all of the things that actually influence your music? How can you still write the music if you're living in New York? Not at all. Uh, I actually wrote and recorded this album here in the States. Um, and the funny thing is, I don't think I could have ever created a or the album if I would have still been there, because you're just so conditioned to just accept everything for what it is. Mm -hmm. The shooting or some, all this completely unacceptable, shocking wave of violence, you're not necessarily reacting to it the way you should because you're so consumed in it. Uh, so when I eventually moved to New York and took a step back, that's when I realized there's actually something wrong about this and I want to help rewrite the narrative, but I think music has the power to inspire people and unite people. And that's what I'm hoping to accomplish with this album. And there are fans. This is Imonio on Twitter who says, I'm just a fan from Sweden, but I love the music because Rebstar shows the world that there is more than one side to the story. So what's next for you musically? I want to definitely show a bit more of a holistic uh, side of Jusengord. So more videos. And mm -hmm. I have a lot of interesting records that I've been working on that I can't wait to share with the world. All right, you're not telling us anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I'm the type of person. As Keeping soon as it I, close. No, no, no. As soon as I record a song, I want to release it and share it with the world. Right. But uh, I'm learning to be a little bit more patient. So very soon, I promise. It's it's becoming obvious as we're having this conversation that you care very deeply about the neighborhood and the part of the world that you come from, and you show this in a way that you are a mentor and help people who are in circumstances where they could do with some help and they could do with a role model. Yeah. So you're, you're a role model for lots of people who come from where <laughs> you grew really up. Kind. Tell kind. us more about that. I, uh, so I've had the privilege of working with a lot of amazing artists mm -hmm. who I don't think would have been artists today if we wouldn't have met. And that's not to say I'm the reason they're artists today, but I do think people need that support system that I was referring to that I lacked. And I had to find it somewhere else. And I got the privilege. One of the artists that I work with, Lucinder, mm -hmm. I actually got to know through one of uh, these um, at-risk youth projects that I work on. Um, he was a young kid in the city of Malmo, reached out to me and said, there are a lot of distractions in his life, and we're hoping that this passion of music that he has can help him focus on something more positive instead. And we work together now. Mm -hmm. He's signed to my record label. And he's changed my life just as much as I hope I've impacted mm -hmm. his.
So someone else who might be impacted, this is Christine on Twitter. She writes, you said that your music wasn't your first choice of career. So what made you make a 360 degree turnaround? I asked because I wanted to be a world renowned actress, but the environment I found myself in changed my career path. So generally I'll, I'll widen that out, but how, do you, how would you advise people to seek that support system that you say you're trying to make right now? It's very different, but the similarity in the same situation with a lot of people in the industry, but you have to remove yourself from that environment. You uh, need to find a more positive and inspiring environment that will give you the options and opportunities you need. You're not going to find that if you're already having trouble there. I actually went to law school and in Scotland, in Aberdeen, Scotland, and that's when I decided, you know what, I need to, I need to focus on music. This is my calling. I dropped out of law school. Uh -huh. And that's when things started happening. And then you messaged Drake. How did that happen? <laughs> what, what does that look like? This is before Drake was as famous as we know him now. But So Drake was still pretty big. The thing was, I just knew he's going to be the world's biggest artist, uh -huh. without a doubt. And I'm always the type of person, if I want something, I have to go out and get it. I sent him a message on MySpace. And he replied within an hour. I was in my apartment <laughs> in the UK studying law my first year. And the message just said, call me, all caps and a phone number. And before I called, I had decided I'm dropping out. I'm yeah. going to focus on music. Uh, people are going to be watching you. They listen to your hip hop. You're telling us that it's, it's infused with, with a, a, a feeling from Sweden. I would love to hear you just say a little bit in Swedish because I know when people are in New York and they, you say, oh, I'm from Sweden, they do not believe you. So this is what I'll say. You, this is the one sentence you both should learn. And when you go to Malmo specifically, yeah. I'm going to help you order something called kebab pizza. Okay? All right. You will have a kebab pizza, uh. blandad sauce. That means I like one kebab pizza with mixed sauce. That's Don't ask the only Swedish you're going to teach That's us? That's the only Swedish you need All when right. you go to Malmo. You say that, they will embrace <laughs> you. All right. Gems and wisdom from Rebstar. <laughs> That's all the time we have, but Rebstar is going to perform one more song. It is called Emergency. And while we let him get set up for that, here are three Swedish musical artists, some of whom Rebstar has worked with, one of whom we talked about today, who tell us why hip hop in Sweden matters. <laughs> Hip hop to me is everything. It saved my life. Coming from where we from, it was an outlet to escape. Uh, it gave me everything, so I owe everything to hip hop. Uh, I give, I try to give hope to the hopeless. I try to spread love. Uh, I try to spread growth, and we can always get better. Never let your circumstances define who you are. My music is about breaking the norms, it's about ignoring traditions, it's about swimming against the streams, it's about being a black sheep. Um, since I can remember, I've always hated structures. Um, I guess I'm more of a cat than a dog in some ways. I'm, I'm a sinner to obey the law. <laughs> Swedish hip hop has become the voice of the youth these past couple of years, especially for young immigrants in this country. It's the way we represent ourselves and the way we give a relative perspective to those that need it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody scream a murder. Someone scream a murder. Someone scream a murder. No one screams emerging. See, someone scream a murder. Someone scream a murder. Please, someone scream a murder. No one screams emerging. See, not afraid to die. Not afraid to die. Talking about my girl and what started as a joke. Now you messing with my pride. With my, with my pride. Wanna let it go, but my homies gas me up saying you can let it slide. You can let it slide. Now my hands are tied, feel like I ain't got a choice, gotta live up to the hype. Live up to the hype. Adrenaline is high. I'm a ride till somebody screaming murder. A mother lost a child, she was begging in to stop fighting, but he never heard her. Tears run down her cheeks, candles lighting up the streets, now pain becoming anger. Homies have a drink and they yank his name in flesh, swear to God that they gon' hurt him. Swear they gonna hurt him. Till somebody scream a murder. Someone scream a murder. Please. Someone scream a murder. No one 
Someone scream the murder, please. Someone scream the murder. No one screams emerging. See, someone scream the murder. Someone scream the murder, please. Someone scream the murder. No one screams emerging. See, now they out for blood. Now they out for blood. Cycle never ends, but it's not about revenge.